Okay. So once again, uh, I apologize for this inconvenience. So after having recognized once again the contribution of my co-authors, uh, actually we are going to deal with the methodology that we have developed in Politecnico di Milano to test very early age fracture properties of 3D printable fiber enforced mixes. So first of all, uh, we need to ask ourselves, why do we need to identify these very early age fracture parameters? And also what does very early age mean in the 3D printing technologies? So actually uh, when we print, we have to pump basically the material, the mixture through a circuit through the nozzle. So this basically depends on the rheological properties of the fluid. We have to extrude it and we come into play, look into play in this case, the tensile strength of the filament. And then we have to consider the buildability of the material. And this invokes the shear and the compressive strength of each layer. One applications, this is one of the uh, tests that we've been doing at the company I was mentioning before, thinking of 3D printing a formwork, and then you have to fill with regular concrete. The pressure of the fluid concrete inside generates tensile hoop stresses in the formwork. So you like also to know at what stage of the life of this formwork you can start pouring the fresh concrete, the fluid concrete in, and so the material is able to withstand the hoop tensile stresses. So as a matter of fact, we use a mix which, which consists of Portland white cement 52.5, according to the European standards, and sulfoluminate cement, it's a mixture. We use it silica sand and partially recycled uh, silica with natural basalt microfibers obtained by basalt rock melting, very, very high aspect ratio. And we use the liquid superplasticizer and a modified acrylic polymer in aqueous solution. So this is the constituents, these are the constituents of our mix. And we tested also uh, in the beginning with an icarreometer on the printing side, you can see just short movie of our material. And these are the results we tested after 20 minutes, 30 minutes and 45 minutes. These are times measured after the contact of the powders with water. And we identified also, we also tested after one hour and a half was quite difficult to be performed. And you can see that in the first four, five, 45 minutes, we obtained it very, very similar results, whereas there was a jump of one order of magnitude between 45 and 90 minutes. So this is the time frame in which we realize that something, some kind of fluid to solid transition is happening. So we decided to investigate this also from the mechanical point of view. So we developed our test methodology. These are some plexiglass molds that we built to the purpose for the tensile and the shear test. We use the dedicated load cell with a capacity of 60 kilograms, so very, very precise. Also, some of the details, you can see we have an accuracy of the load cell of one gram and we use a regular LVDT to measure, to measure the instruments, as you can see here in the picture. So this is the geometry of the tensile mold. We have a fixed part, which is, here sketched in uh, white and the movable part, which is in gray. The specimen is about 30 centimeters long by eight centimeters wide. And we have some circular uh, grooves uh, in the central part in order to induce a restriction of the central portion of the specimen and trigger the tensile failure there. And the specimen was six centimeters thick. Uh, an example of the uh, specimen filled with the printed material. This was done on the printing side. And this is an example of how it does look like at the end of the test with a clear tensile fracture. And some fibers can be spotted uh, if you observe clearly on the fracture surface. These are uh, the results of the test that we did, oh, sorry, that we did on the uh, printed material, you can see that in the first half an hour, this is a test at 15 and 36 minutes are the blue and the orange curves. The material is still very, very fluid. Whereas you enter into the printable regime around one hour and you keep it until one hour and a half. The results are quite repeatable in this time frame. Then we went for the shear test. In this case, the shear, it's a typical shear box test according to the fracture mechanics. Uh, it's uh, 18 centimeters wide in the fixed part, a little bit more on top. 
and it total the total width is 10 centimeters and once again it's six centimeters thick so we have the gray part which is movable and the white part which is fixed and you can see here uh, an example of the test you can see that some uh, uh, diagonal cracks originating from the tips of the notch started forming and then you have the shearing off of the ligament cross section at the end of the test and also here you can see that our uh, you know, test methodology is able to follow the material along its evolution from the fluid to the printable plastic, I will say, up to the solid. You have in the, in the fluid plastic uh, response, very, very flat response. Actually, the five kilopascal that we identified as a threshold to start seeing the specimen moving are consistent with the yield stress of the material that we measured with the rheometer. Then you start seeing an evolution of the material and uh, after about one hour and a half, uh, two hours, you see that the response is that typical of a shear box in solid state because you have the formation of the strut and then the crushing of the strut and the shearing off of the ligament cross section. So actually we identified on the printing side that as I said, uh, the fluid to solid transition phase changes occurs or likely to occur between 45 minutes and about one hour and a half, two hours. So then we decided to perform a controlled lab investigation with the same mix using the same test at very regularly controllable intervals. So we tested 30, 60, 75, 90 minutes and 120 minutes after which we realized that the material is really solid and the capacity of the devices that we use are exceeded. So these are some results. Actually, uh, we did most of these tests in the very last months after the restrictions of the COVID lockdown were released and we were able to fully go back to work. Lab. These are tests at 30 minutes, quite a noise. The material is still fluid in this stage. Uh, and we go for longer time. This is at 45 minutes. You identify here uh, plastic behavior after the yield stress is overcome. But anyway, we confirm uh, more or less quantitatively the results that we obtained on the printing side. And here you can see these are a shear, a shear test. Here you can see that we have an initial plastic phage and then at one hour, there is the formation of this strut and a clear solid behavior at 90 minutes where we have this response, which was also detected on the printing side. So actually these are uh, some comparison at 30, 60 and 90 minutes. You can see that really there is this fluid to solid transition in the same time frame that we identified. The same happens for the tensile response. We have this um, response when the material is in the in the fluid state and we have this plastic response at 45 minutes and at 60 minutes we can start seeing some behavior typical of a quasi brittle solid in the sense that we overcome a tensile strength and then we have a post cracking response with the softening and the plateau. Actually, you can see that this test at 60 minutes, but also as here is seen at 120 minutes, we got several noise uh, and we are trying to fix this issue, trying to modify a little bit our mold, inserting some rollers, which can help us in avoiding this problem, which we think can be due to some kind of friction or some kind also of usage, intensive usage of the uh, our, uh, our mode. So just coming to the conclusions, I've shown these preliminary results of this test methodology that we have developed to identify in the fresh state or in the fluid to solid transition stage, the direct tension and the tensile shear behavior of uh, 3D printable mixes to determine the evolution of the properties during the printability windows and correlate quite well the results that we have obtained with the rheological properties. Our aim, we are also uh, now developing a penetration test device to, uh, we're building up uh, for uh, the compressive behavior in order to identify completely the Kupfer domain in the fluid state and in the fluid to solid transition. So in this 
time frame which we have identified for our mix to occur between 45 minutes and about one hour and a half, two hours. We are going to perform further validation of our test methodology. And in our setup, we have also planned to insert some thermocouple to measure also through the development of the heat of hydration, also what is happening in terms of fluid to solid transition. As a matter of fact, we have detected that because of the presence of the sulfoluminate cement, very high temperatures could be reached and adiabatic calorimeter cannot be suitable to the purpose of measuring precisely what happens really during this stage. So I just want to thank you for your attention, thank the uh, collaborators of the startup company we are working with and all my colleagues at Politecnico di Milano once again and I apologize for the inconvenience of my uh, wireless shutdown before and I thank you again for your attention. Thank you Liberato. Um, I do see one question. Um, I know you said you, you, you might have to uh, leave um, no, well, I, I see the question of uh, Sonobi, you see, is that one? That's, that's the one. Okay. Well, hi, Sonobi. I can answer it directly. Actually, on the printing side, we printed the mortar in the molds, whereas in the lab, we uh, cast it as a normal mortar. It uh, looks like there's another question in the, uh, in the chat. Okay, uh, what, I can... what fiber did you use in the mixture? Yeah, they were basalt fibers. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Thanks. So much, yeah. Thanks a lot. Right.